All right, here's another example of comparing two population means. Um, and we know that the samples are large, independent, and we know uh, sigma, the standard deviation of the two population. Okay, so it says here, a travel, uh, a travel agency claims that the average daily cost of meals and, and lodging for vacationing in Texas is less than the average daily cost in Virginia. Okay, the table at the left, which is really down here, shows the results of a random survey of vacationers in each state. The two samples are independent. Assume that sigma one standard deviation of the first population is $19, and that's for Texas, and sigma two standard deviation of the second population is $24, that's for Virginia, and that both populations are normally distributed at alpha equal 0.01 significance level. Is there any enough evidence to support this claim? So here we go. Let's follow these eight steps, okay? Step number one, make sure you check all of these requirements. Do I know sigma one and sigma two? Yes, I do. Look, they're right here, okay? Sigma one, sigma two, good. The next thing I need to check, are the samples random? Well, when you look over here, it said that the results of a random survey, so yes. The next thing, are the samples independent? Okay, so the, does the daily cost of meals and lodging in Texas has to do with anything with Virginia? Well, it says here that, and I know I read it, it says here that the two samples are independent, so yes. And uh, does it say here in this word problem, anything if the populations are normally distributed? And yes, it's right there. So I did my first step. I made sure that all of these requirements were there. Now, if the word normally distributed is in the word problem, you don't need to worry about the sample size, okay? So as long as it says normally distributed, you're fine. Now, if this word was not there, normally distributed, then you have to check the sample size. That's what I did in my previous video, okay? Now we're gonna go step two. So let's do step two here. And what is step two? Let's write the claim mathematically. And remember, I suggested you underline the claim. And here what it says, a tra travel agency claim that the average, that's the mean, cost of meals and lodging in Texas is less than the average of uh, the average daily cost in Virginia. Okay, so we're going to say that mu1 is for Texas. And because it says it's less than, we're going to write like this, less than the average daily cost in Virginia. So mu2 is Virginia. Okay, and this is my claim. Let me type it instead of writing it. This is my original claim. All right. Now remember that every claim has a counterclaim. Okay, and the counterclaim will be greater than or equal, but it doesn't matter how do we write it. We Instead of writing greater than or equal, we're going to say it's equal. Mu1 is equal to mu2. Okay, and those are my claims. Remember that each claim we have to label it. Okay, so uh, the claim that has the equal will be HO. Okay, and the claim that doesn't have the equal will be H1 or or HA, okay? And we did step number two. Step number three, we're gonna identify alpha significance level, and that's right here, 0 0.01. And we did step three. Step four, we're gonna draw the bell-shaped curve, okay? That's step four. So let's draw the bell-shaped curve. And when you draw the bell-shaped curve, you need to shade a tail. Who decide uh, which tail you're gonna shade? H1 or HA. Because I have a less than, I'm shading the left tail. And that's step number four. Step number five, okay, that's the next step is, I did step four, here we go, step five. I'm gonna find the test statistic which basically I'm using this formula right here. Let's plug it in, Z equal, 
okay and I have a uh, first parenthesis X bar one you can see right here that's from Texas the mean uh, daily cost of meals and lodging in Texas is 234 I'm gonna type instead of writing it so 234 I'm gonna subtract X bar two the mean or the average daily cost in Virginia 240 close the parentheses and then I'm gonna subtract the mu1 minus mu2 now if you look at HO we are assuming that the means are equal and when the means are equal that means this subtraction will be zero that's what I type zero there okay so because the means from here you can see mu1 equal mu2 when the means are equal this here is gonna be zero all right, that's why I put zero. And then I'm going to do the square root of, now I have two fractions here. Let's start typing the first fraction, sigma one, that will be 19. And what I'm going to do with the 19, square that. Over N1, how big was the sample? 25. Let's do the second fraction, sigma two square. So that sigma two is 24. And I'm going to square that number. And then who's my N2? Uh, 20. And don't forget, or oh, I suggest, when you simplify this, use decimals. So I'm going to get my decimal calculator. I know it's somewhere around here. Here it is. And you, I, I did a previous problem using this calculator. So I'm just going to erase these numbers and put the new numbers. So 234 minus 240. And then on the bottom here, I'm going to have 19 and then 25 on the bottom. And then in the second fraction, the top is going to be 24 and 20 on the bottom. And you can see my Z score. Z scores are two decimal places, so this will be negative 0.91. And don't forget that this number is going to become the label of my mark here. So this is negative 0.91. Okay, and we did step number five. Now we're going to do step six. And what is step six? We're going to find the P value. Okay, P value. I want to find out how much is P. And basically, you just want to find out how much is shaded there. And how do we do that? We're going to use the normal calculator. And I have it here. Let me clean it up. And because it's shaded to the left, I'm going to choose the second option here. In the blue box, I type my Z negative 0 0.91 hit enter you can see that is sh the, the calculator is showing the same tail shaded and my answer will be the red box my probability my p-value three decimal places 0 0.181 I just want to confirm that uh, yep okay good and I did step six step seven Okay, that's when you're going to make the decision. You can see here the decision. How do I make the decision? Compare P against alpha. That's what you're really doing. Who is my P? 0.181. That was step six. Okay. Who is my alpha? That was step three. 0.01. All right. And from left to right, 0.181 is bigger than 0.01. So according to this chart here, Okay, when the p-value is bigger than alpha, we're going to say fail to reject HO. Okay, and we did step number seven. Now we're going to go step number eight. Okay, that's when we make the interpretation. And we're going to use this other chart. I need first, what was the decision? That was step seven, fail to reject HO. So we're in the second row here. And I need to know where is the claim. That's why I put the word claim in parentheses. And that word is in H1, which is the same thing as HA. So I'm in this last column. So I'm in the second row, last column. What does it say, the intersection? There is not enough evidence to support the claim. That's what I'm going to submit. Not enough evidence to support the claim. What claim, the original claim, that the average daily cost of meals and lodging in Texas is less than Virginia, okay? Not enough evidence to support the claim, and that's how you work this out. I hope this helps.